Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Dictations. We're back in the interview format. I'm here, as always, on Dictations, our flagship show with Dr. Rogers, uh, medical director and founder of Performance Medicine. Dr. Rogers, thank you for, again, sitting down with me uh, for Dictations. Glad to, Ben. Or you could call me Dad if you want. We don't do we don't do dad on dictations. Okay, all right. Okay. We are going to dinner though. After that, I'll call it like that's I'll, dad at the dinner table. Okay, all right. We roll with them. Okay. <laughs> so, Doctor Rogers, um, before we started recording here, um, we were talking a little bit about chelation, and it's actually one of the more common questions we get on our website because we are an integrative medical clinic. We are, we are looking at, you know, quote-unquote alternative treatments, that sort of thing, and chelation tends to, to get put in that category. Why don't you to educate me on what chelation is and what it's for? Chelation is a Latin term for clawing, and what that means is, in medical terms, with a, with a medical substance, you're clawing things out of the body, removing them, maybe detoxifying. I first learned about or heard about chelation back when I was a little kid. This is really kind of interesting. Um, one of the, um, the chemists at Eastman, of course, I grew up in Kingsport and half the neighborhood dads worked at Eastman and a lot of them were chemists or chemical engineers, that type of brainiac type people and one of my friends dad's was a, a PhD chemist and I'll never forget that he went off to get chelation treatments because of what he was exposed to at Eastman I really couldn't tell you why he got them okay. I don't know if it was because of exposures or toxicities or where he was in the war you know World War II or not but he was a pretty old guy by that time and he really believed that these treatments that he got were really keeping him alive a long time and I talked to my dad about it and dad was a surgeon and he was kind of skeptical of it but I'll never because so at that time I thought chelation was kind of a quackery type thing but um, since I've you know been a doctor for so many years and researched it a little bit because what I try to do is look outside the box for things you can do to keep yourself young and healthy and prevent disease and uh, so I started getting interested from, about chelation a few years ago and quickly found out that in Tennessee, you can't do it IV-wise. Um, seems like well, hard. Was, was the chemist getting it done intravenously? I'm pretty sure he was because he had to go to a different clinic in a different state to get it done. That's wild and, that they've uh, been doing it for that long. Yeah. Well, they actually discovered chelation back... Um, Sometime in the 1940s, uh, during World War II, when these sailors were painting the ships with lead-based paint, and they all, they got toxic. They couldn't figure out why they were just wasting away and dying. And they, found, and they figured out it was it was lead poisoning, mm -hmm. and so they discovered chelation. And later on, you know, when kids would eat the paint off their walls, you know, just lick it or whatever. Um, they were getting lead poisoning also because at that time paint had lead in it. And so um, that's kind of one reason they took lead out of gasoline. Lead's toxic, you know. And then so they developed this, this simple way of getting the detoxifying your body from lead. Then they figured out it worked for mercury, cadmium. Um, I think it may work for arsenic too, but heavy metals. And... Um, so they've had it around for years, and the, the main agent that they used, um, still use, is called EDTA. And it turns out that this is a, a really inexpensive substance that's um, very similar to vinegar that you use at, at your house. Um, um, as a matter of fact, it's so safe, probably three times safer than aspirin, that they add it to... Um, they add it to baby food. It's also used as kind of, of a preservative. Um, EDTA. EDTA, this chemical named EDTA, to prevent browning of foods and keep the fish looking kind of fresh. But it's a totally safe preservative. And, and they're just eating it. 
So you're and it's part of the food. Yeah, it's it's a powder that they put in there. It can be a liquid, a powder. But um, even in Tennessee, we're 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 kind of behind the times in Tennessee with a lot of medical things. Um, so the board of health in Tennessee really doesn't like IV chelation, which involves inserting it into your vein. And in inserting EDTA? Yeah. Okay. Mostly EDTA. There's some other chelators too, but that's the main one. But um, which requires a lot of time, effort, expense, and you know, many treatments. Um, it is probably is more potent if you do it in your veins. And what you can get in North Carolina, Virginia, I mean, I send a lot of people in these other states to get it done if they want it. Um, it's, it's safe. It works. But what I discovered was that you could use it, um, you know, in a tiny pill that's totally safe. It's like a vitamin. It's dirt cheap. It works. Um, Is it called it's EDTA? Slower. It's called EDTA. We have it in all our offices. I've been taking it for about six months myself. And I'll tell you why I started taking it. Because... Um, and the main reason we use it is really to prevent cardiac disease because it clears calcium from your arteries. So calcium being the heavy metal. No, calcium is not a heavy metal. But, um, but Calcium is a mineral, but it, it, when calcium deposits in your arteries and joints and kidneys and brain, it ages you and causes plaque to form in your coronary arteries, which is the main thing, and your carotid arteries. But um, so is, is, let me is most are most people getting chelation for uh, calcium or is it for because I've always thought it was for heavy metals. It's for both. OK. But um, and the main reason you hear about it is for heavy metals. But there's a greater use for it, in my opinion, and that's for preventing uh, atherosclerotic heart disease, um, which starts as calcium deposits in your in your arteries. That's why we get CT calcium scorings on your heart to see how much calcium plaque you've laid down in your coronary arteries and your carotid arteries when we study that, that leads to strokes. Well, and that's, I mean, that, that was something that you brought up um, during uh, one, of our, one of the detections episodes a few weeks ago on high blood pressure was you talked about you yourself right. monitoring your blood pressure and how your calcium score which was perfect 10 years ago has, has, uh, is not perfect anymore. Right. Um, as you're getting older and I'm assuming that's part of the reason why you're taking. That's, ED- that's the reason I started EDTA. Great okay. point. And another point you made too, was that it will help lower your blood pressure. Hmm. Um, so it kind of cl- scrubs your arteries. I mean, you've got so many miles of arteries in your body. It's unbelievable. And it kind of keeps them clean. So in my opinion, it's it's a greater use. It's great for, you know, detoxifying from heavy metals. But for the for the normal average person who's aging, it really serves a greater function in cleaning out your arteries of calcium plaque. It works in your joints, too. When you get arthritis in your joints, that's usually a that's plaque, calcified joints. So um, is that is that what you mean by you said clawing at the beginning? So is, is that hap, is the clawing happening whether you're getting it intravenously or through taking? Yeah, a, exactly right. Okay. And the reason. And what's that know, mean? Kind of detail what that is. The clawing function. Well, clawing just the the term for chelation. Lat, oh. lat, chelation in Latin means clawing, a clawing out. So. So getting it's just rid a of. term, or getting rid of, or detoxifying. Okay. So okay. it's kind of an artery scrubber, you know, from all the way from your kidneys to your, all your blood vessels. That's why your blood pressure will come down. It helps erectile dysfunction because that's usually placking of your arteries, um, small arteries. It helps claudication or pain in the legs from blocked arteries. Um, a lot of people take it, and they, they'll find their pulses again in their feet. Um, there's been some evidence that it helps spider veins, varicose veins, maybe even somewhat in preventing dementia. I mean, there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't take this. Like I said, it's in baby food. It's as safe as household vinegar. It is three times safer than aspirin, which I also recommend is a preventive for cardiovascular disease to keep your blood thinner. But so I think that and aspirin are a good way to kind of 
prevent progression of hardening of your arteries. I certainly, when I saw my calcium scoring going up on my heart um, and my blood pressure rising just a little bit because I'm 65 years old, mm -hmm. um, I'm aging, I'm getting calcified. So I immediately started taking this. It's going to be interesting to see how it does for me. But I know it's not hurting me. It's dirt cheap. The pills are inexpensive. You don't have to go get IVs. Um, I'm telling you, um, a lot of cardiologists get this behind the doors. You know, they, they may not want their patients to know they're taking it because it is kind of mm -hmm. an alternative treatment. Um, but uh, Is the effectiveness between, you know, getting it through an IV versus getting it through a pill – is it similar in the discrepancy between getting a vitamin C infusion versus taking vitamin C orally? Is that kind of the, the um, same correlation there? Yeah, it's a lot more potent intravenously. To so if you've got an acute problem, or you like you've got 90% blockage in your coronary arteries, to maybe prevent yourself from getting an angioplasty or stents, you could do that if you just didn't want it. As a matter of fact, the reason I thought about this doing this today was because uh, one of my patients is faced with, um, he's been told he needs a four-vessel bypass surgery, and he really doesn't want to get that done. You know, he's got quite a bit of blockage, but he's totally asymptomatic. He's also a diabetic. So I immediately put him on EDTA, and um, it may prevent him from, because he's totally refusing to get the bypass, and I can't blame him really. Um, so, it, so who would you advise to go get chelation through an IV versus taking EDTA? Probably, you know, somebody like that when there's more of a critical time period to get it done. Um, um, like if you're facing a, a stinning procedure or uh, you've been recommended that you get a bypass operation, um, an IV is going to be a lot faster with chelation. But like I say, you're going to have to go out of state. Um, uh, and you're going to have to have multiple treatments. So I like preventative medicine, so I started early on Got patients it. that I know have risk factors or even just minor things like arthritis, mild hypertension, um, pain in their legs when they walk, or, you know, they've had TIAs or many strokes. But, um, you know, it's not going to hurt you, and there's no reason not to try it. Do you have an, it doesn't do you have an interact age? with anything. Like a certain age point where someone needs to start taking it? Yeah, I mean, you know, it just depends on your risk factor. Some people may need to start it at, at 40, some people at 50, some people at 60. Um, but uh, it looks on, it depends on your risk factors. Are you a diabetic? Are you a smoker? Uh, do you have high blood pressure? Have you, do you have an abnormal CT calcium scoring or... or do you have some blockage or calcifications in your coronary arteries already? You know, we do that test in our office called the carotid IMT test, which is a good test to determine your arterial age. So what we're trying to do is predict, you know, 10 years from now if you're going to have an event. And, mm -hmm. you know, heart attacks and strokes kill, what, a million Americans a year. Uh, you know, somebody dies of a heart attack every 30 seconds, I think. And then strokes, they're, in, they're high up there, too. So, you know, this is all preventative. Um, so I think it's a great, inexpensive, almost no-brainer treatment for it, people that are aging or that have risk factors for it. You're talking about it, you know, very much as a preventative tool for, for like you said, for heart disease. Does, does heavy metals... Uh, is there a relationship between heavy metal toxicity and heart disease as well, or is that there just is and calcium? also cancer? Okay, you know, but th that's two different reasons for taking chelation. Okay, and, and what um, you're you're talking about it from the heart disease perspective? Uh, well, yeah, we're talking about it from a heart disease perspective. Although it certainly works and was discovered for heavy metal toxicity. Because that's that's the um, I guess the context I've heard of chelation in is for heavy metals, and I just want to ask you know, based on what you know and your experience, um, who gets heavy metal toxicity? Who gets, like, how does that happen? Is well, it, I, I know you always say we live in a toxic world, and, and, but heavy metals is like such a kind yeah, of a buzz I mean, term in, a lot in of, our world. They're in a lot of places. I mean, um, people that are like around here, they used to work in a big battery plant around here. They would get uh, heavy metal toxicity, um, 
they you know a lot of, if you're around a lot of farm equipment um you can get it or certain plants that manufacture this stuff um you can even get it from the mercury in your teeth the fillings in your teeth mm, yeah a lot of you can get it through eating too much tuna you know you get heavy metals through some large fish so um, there's a lot of ways to get heavy metal toxicity so if you really just can't figure out why you feel so tired or your joints hurt or sometimes we'll look into heavy metals and see if you've possibly had some toxic loads of heavy metals in your system so it's a real thing the more industrialized we became the more we saw of this but uh well i i mean one thing i i did not know that edta and chelation could could help with with heart disease which is a lot of what we do at performance medicine and a lot of what you talk about um just from a preventative standpoint so that's really fascinating i've never thought about chelation uh with heart disease and how it can can help with that yeah i think that's the main reason that you would use it now i really do um very useful, very little risk at all to taking it, inexpensive. So, you know, if you have risk factors or you, or you just think you may want to take some, it's an over-the-counter, easy treatment for is there, it. Is there any brands you recommend? Uh, not really. You know, we get one here um, in the office we order. I forget where we order it from, but uh, um, I think it may be a life extension product. But it works. I certainly take it myself, so... Last question, and, and I hate to, you know, put you on the spot with a prediction here, but do you do you think Tennessee will ever legalize uh, IV chelation? Probably. You yeah. know, we, we tend to be on the conservative side, and we're late to the game in a lot of things, kind of like medical marijuana. Yeah. I'm sure it will someday be legalized, but, yeah, I think it will. The more we learn about it and, you know, the more heart disease we see. I mean, we live in a state where – you know, obesity is an epidemic, so um, certainly um, we need treatments like this. Yeah. So, Well, man, Doc, thanks so much for your time today. This was a great episode. Uh, guys listening or watching, I hope you guys get a ton out of this. A really interesting correlation between EDTA and heart disease. Dr. Rogers, thank you again uh, for this episode of Dictations. Uh, and just for everyone listening out there, I call him Pop. Uh, Pop is my nickname for him uh, outside of the office. So, uh, so Pop, let's go get some dinner. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. All right. See you guys.